Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem three from the Hacker Rank Week of Code 38 contest entitled A Time Saving Affair. The problem states Janet is in an Uber on her way to an interview. The driver promises to take her to the venue as soon as possible. The driver is aware that there are N junctions in the city of Mumbai numbered from 1 to N. Janet's interview location is at junction N and they are initially at junction 1 and there are M bidirectional roads connecting some pairs of junctions, each one requiring some amount of time to pass through it. At every junction, there are traffic lights, denoting whether they are allowed to go further or that they must wait. Traffic lights have two colors, red and green. The driver can commute through junctions based on the following conditions. One, at any junction, if the traffic signal's light is green, they can go immediately. Otherwise, they have to wait until the traffic signal becomes green. And two, traffic signal changes its color every k seconds of time at all junctions simultaneously. Initially, at the zeroth second, all traffic lights have changed to green color at all junctions. If the cab driver reaches a junction at a second when the traffic light changes its color, then he sees the traffic light after the change. Can you help the driver determine the least amount of time needed to reach the interview location? And note that the main constraints that we need to worry about is that the number of junctions is going to be between 1 and 10 to the 4. Uh, K, the number of seconds for the traffic light to change, is going to be between 1 and 100. And M, the number of possible bi-directional roads, is going to be between 1 and 10 to the 5th. So this is a classic um, Dijkstra's you know, shortest path algorithm uh, with a slight twist that has this sort of traffic light that will prevent us from moving at a certain point in time. So let's take a look at the example that HackerRank provided us with. So this is the example, uh, the inputs on the left, and uh, more importantly, uh, the visualization that they provided us with is on the right. So it shows the solution to the problem, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so this is uh, the representation that we're going to use. So it shows that we've got our uh, seven uh, junctions, we've got uh, seven bidirectional roads in between them, and most importantly, uh, K, the number of seconds for a traffic light to change from uh, red to green or green to red is going to be four seconds. So the way we're going to solve this problem is by using a priority queue, uh, technically not a priority queue, but for the purpose of the explanation of this, we're going to assume that it is. Uh, and we are also going to make use of uh, unordered set or a hash set. So uh, the numbers that just showed up are the weights from of the bidirectional pass that represent the time that it takes to get from uh, one junction to another. So if we move this up a little bit, uh, here we're going to have our priority queue and uh, also uh, just for the clarity of the explanation, uh, pair, which is going to represent uh, the first element in our pair is going to be the time to get to the certain stop and uh, the second value in our pair is going to be the stop number. So we're going to initialize our priority queue uh, to have a time of zero and stop number one because that's the stop that uh, the cab driver is going to start at and our goal is to get to uh, stop number n which in this case is seven uh, so once we've initialized our priority queue as so we're going to pop this off and make it our current stop and then we are going to after having built an adjacency list which we'll see uh, how we're going to do that once we get to the code but it's pretty simple we are just going to loop through all the stops that are connected to our current stop so stop one is connected to stop two and stop four and so we are going to push these two stops into our priority queue to visit next. Um, so the only tricky part about this is that sometimes we're going to need to add a little bit of time if at the time that we arrive at our next stop uh, we know the traffic light's going to be uh, red. So it's going to take three seconds to get to stop number two. So because we know the traffic light is green at this point and it's going to be green for the next four seconds, uh, the stop two is going to be fine. Uh, so we'll add stop number two and it takes three seconds to get there but for stop number four at the time uh, by the time it reaches stop number four four seconds will have elapsed and that means that it's going to uh, turn red and then we're going to need to wait there for four seconds so how do we adjust this four to eight basically every time we uh, calculate this uh, time that we are going to insert into our priority queue for each stop we're going to check this if t divided by k so that's the current time up until this point uh, to get 
get to that stop uh, divided by the number of seconds uh, for the uh, traffic light to change. Uh, modulus 2, if it's equal to 1, we know that we're in one of the red traffic light cycles. So they alternate back and forth, which is why we use modulus 2. And whenever uh, the modulus 2 of this integer division is equal to 1, we know that we're in a uh, red traffic light cycle. And so what we're going to do is if this condition is satisfied, we are going to reset t to be equal to sort of the ceiling of the uh, next cycle, which is going to be when the traffic light turns green. So we'll do that by doing the integer, inter, integer division t over k, adding 1 to this, and then multiplying it by k again. So this is basically a ceiling function. And so once we've set uh, reset t to be equal to this, we know that uh, the, uh, the next Next time, at this time, we're going to be in a green traffic light state. Uh, so we can move on um, now that we're done processing our first junction. The next junction we're going to process is going to be uh, three two. Uh, so the gray now represents it's sort of been already visited, and uh, orange still means in the frontier. And so three two, we're going to look at the nodes that we haven't visited already. So this will be put into a hash set so that we're not uh, duplicating nodes or junctions that we've already visited. So we're going to push on to uh, the priority queue node 3 and this one is also because at this point we are adding to it uh, 1 to 3 which gives us 4 which now means that we're in a uh, red traffic light state. So we need to add 4 again uh, in order to get our total time. So note that each time you push a new junction into our priority queue, you need to add uh, the current weight of the edge that we're traversing to the total time of the current stop. So at this point, our time is three, and because we've traversed uh, this edge with a value of one, we get a total time of four, and then once we do our t divided by k modulus two condition check, we know that we need to add uh, some extra time, which is the full cycle length of four, which is how we get to uh, eight. Uh, and because uh, of the way our priority queue is sorted, uh, this junction or pair is going to be uh, inserted in front of our existing junction. So then we can move to our next junction, which is going to be uh, junction three. Uh, from here, we're going to add to it uh, junction five to our priority queue. And this is going to have a total time of nine because we have eight plus the edge weight, which is one, and that gives us nine. Uh, so at this point, we're then going to process junction 4. Uh, the two nodes that we haven't visited yet are node 6 and node 5. So uh, 6 will get added with a weight of, or a total time of 15. And 5 will get added with a total time of 13. And note that we now have in our uh, priority queue two different uh, pairs for the node number 5, which is OK uh, because we're only going to process the one with the faster time uh, because we have we're storing the nodes that we've already processed in a hash set and once we've processed the first one we'll never process this one uh, and so after this we can move to our next node which will or junction which will be five um, and from here we're going to add our uh, junction seven into our priority queue and this will get added with a value of two our edge weight plus our total time so far which will be 11 and then uh, we're done with this junction and our next junction will be our target junction uh, junction number seven so at this point we have our solution and we're just going to return the time which is the first value in our pair so that's our algorithm uh, it's a basic sort of dijkstra's shortest path algorithm uh, there's only one trick in implementing it which i'll show in the code we aren't actually able to use a priority queue um, and the, the only thing you need to sort of figure out is how to figure out when to add that extra time. So let's take a look at the code. So here is our C++ solution. Uh, we have our function least time to interview that takes uh, three parameters uh, that are all integers and our number of junctions, k the seconds for the traffic light to change color, and m the number of bidirectional roads. So we have our uh, representation of our adjacency list. So that's um, every node that can get from one to another. So we're initializing this uh, to have to be a vector of set of pairs. Uh, and like I said, 
in the visual explanation, the first value is going to be the time and the second value is going to be the stop number. We're doing it with m plus one because the uh, inputs that we're given are one index, not zero indexed. And we are going to uh, set the values of our adjacency list uh, in the following while loop. So while m is uh, greater than zero, uh, we are going to declare i, j, and t, which are going to be our two junctions and the time to get between them. So uh, we're using a set so that we don't have duplicates, and uh, we just need to do from i to j and from j to i, and the t is going to be the same in both cases. So once we finish this while loop, we have our adjacency list set up so we know which nodes or which junctions can get to which other junctions. And then this is the one trick that you need to use in implementing this. So if you use a priority queue priority queues won't take care of duplicates they're just a wrapper basically around a vector and vectors don't do anything about duplicates so an alternative we can use to using a priority queue is just to use a set of pairs and this will get sorted uh, from uh, the lowest time to the greatest time and so when we're processing it we just need to always process the first element in our set so this is basically a, a quasi priority queue it's just in the form of a set and as mentioned in our visual explanation we initialize this to have the value uh, 0 1 so 0 seconds starting at junction 1 and then we also have a hash set to represent the junctions that we've already processed and then we have a while loop at the bottom that we're going to iterate through uh, it's while true because we know we're told by the problem that we are definitely going to have a path so we don't need to worry about not returning from this while loop and uh, the first thing we'll do in here is we're going to get the current stop that we're at. We do that by dereferencing uh, the iterator return to from the begin method on our set s. And then we pop that method off uh, using the erase function. And uh, we're going to check is the current stop that we're at, is the stop number equal to n? If so, return the time, which is given by the first value. If not, insert this uh, stop that we're at into our hash set so that we don't process it in the future. And then and insert all the junctions that we can get to from this junction um, we're going to use that or do that using a range based for loop uh, the first thing we do is to check whether we process this before using uh, the dot count method on our hash set if so we just continue to the next stop if we haven't processed it we calculate our time to be equal to the total time to get to the current stop plus the time to get to the next stop which is given by the sort of edge weight and then we do our check so we don't want to do this when we're at our final stop because once we get there we don't need to add any extra time we don't need to worry about getting to the next junction uh, so we do this not equal to n and t divided by k modulus 2 equal to 1 and if both of these are satisfied then we want to reset t to be equal to t divided by k integer, integer division here plus 1 times k and once we've done that we now have our, our final t and we want to insert the pair uh, t and the next stop number given by ns dot second into our set or priority queue and so once we've um, finished this range-based for loop, we want to process our next stop. And at some point, we're guaranteed that we're going to hit this condition that our current stop is equal to n. And as mentioned before, we just return uh, the time, which is given by the first value. So that's our whole algorithm. The last thing to talk about is time complexity, which is going to be m log n. Uh, and that's going to be driven by our uh, construction, or I guess the uh, assignment of our adjacency list here. So we are going to have uh, m insertions into a set that at most could have uh, for one of these junctions n minus one other elements in that uh, junction so uh, we know that sort of the number of junctions the number of uh, roads in between two junctions is bounded by n minus one uh, and therefore we have m insertions of uh, log n uh, time complexity there as always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.